If there's one thing DJI's lower cost drones lack, it's the ability to perform waypoint missions. In this video, we're going to take a look at a rather nifty tool called Copterus that enables us to do just that. So here we have the App Store view of Copterus. Up front, we have to admit that it's only available for Apple devices at this stage, but it's still a pretty good tool nonetheless. So let's take a look at how you would go about planning a mission. When you open the app up, it's going to show your location on the map. Clicking at the bottom of the screen enables us to start a new mission. When starting a new mission, it'll place you where you are relative to the map and you'll want to start by giving it a name and then deciding if it's a linear survey or if it's going to be a grid style survey. So here we're naming the flight and we're going to choose the grid style survey because the aim here is to output a 3D model of the area being surveyed. It then presents you with a grid and you'll need to drag the corner circles into the right position so that you cover the survey area. Just drag the screen around as you would. It's very intuitive and easy to do. And if you need at any point, you can click on the plus sign and it will add another circle that you can drag to make your life a little easier and to make more interesting shapes than just the rectangular version, such as I'm doing over here. Once you're done, click the plus in the bottom right hand corner and immediately it'll show you the survey. Clicking on the options allows you to see the statistics and the plan for your flight. If we change and adjust the survey direction, you'll see we can optimize the flight time. At the top of the screen, we see the statistics and they'll adjust as we change the orientation of the flight plan. Have a look at the settings and once you're done, accept them. Then you're ready to fly. In this case, the drone is connected to the phone already as well as the controller. And if we click the fly button at the bottom, we're off. It's time to go flying. Once you've planned the flight and set it all in motion, everything is fully automated from here on out. We can see now the drone is ascending to its survey height and as soon as it's reached its maximum altitude, it will begin its path down to the bottom of our survey area from where it will start. It's around about this time that I realized I hadn't paid enough attention to the warning icon in the top right hand corner. It's always a good idea to pay attention to this because it will alert you to anything that is not optimal for your flight. In this case, there were two problems, but we'll see now as the menu comes up. The first issue that it's going to show us is that the compass calibration could have been a little better and I'd forgotten to stick in my memory card, but because this is for only for demonstration purposes, that won't be a problem at all. So as the drone nears its start position, it will orientate itself in the correct way and it's about to begin survey. You'll also note that in the bottom right hand side there's a little camera icon and if we are to select that, it will turn on the preview so we can see what the drone is passing over at that point. As mentioned before, the entire process is fully automated, number of images captured, the flight direction, the flight speed, etc. Of course, we can adjust these settings as well, and we'll take a look at that a little bit later in the video. So let's just watch as the flight carries on now. I must admit that the conditions for survey were not optimal in this case, but considering it's only for demonstration purposes, I wasn't too worried. The wind gusts were quite strong, and so what you will notice through this flight is that there are times at which the drone varied from the planned flight path. Obviously, you would want to assess your weather conditions before going out and flying. But again, in this case, it isn't a problem. You'll see how Copterus allows the drone to go about its work very efficiently, capturing images as it goes. And before you know it, your survey will be done. So we'll see as the drone finishes the survey, it'll announce that the mission is complete and it'll begin its return to its home base. 
When landing, the app performs a pretty decent survey of the surrounding areas and is careful to land in a region clear of any obstructions. Obviously, it aims to land as close to its starting point as possible, as we'll see in this scenario now. Let's take a close look at the app itself. Going to their website, copterist.app, we will see all of the supported DJI drones. At this stage, it is only DJI drones and not all of them are supported, but it's a pretty substantial list nonetheless. Let's take a closer look now at the app and its many features. So here we are going about choosing a survey area. It's pretty easy to pan around as you would in any other map based app. So again, once you have found your survey region, zoom in, click on the bottom and say start new mission. Again, we want to give it a name and we'll choose survey grid. This is actually a project I performed for a client who lives down the road from me. So once we've named it and chosen survey grid, click create. And again, we go about orientating and dragging the circles of the corners to their desired positions. And where necessary, click the plus button as well. It will give us a new point and we can drag that to edit the polygon just so that it fits the survey area perfectly. This really doesn't take long at all. And we can see the statistics of the flight will adjust as we place the polygon around our survey area, including flight height, the size of the project, the flight duration, number of photos, as well as the number of batteries we need. Click on our settings, we can now choose the correct drone. If we had plugged in our drone beforehand, this would be an automatic process. But here's just an, a view of the list that shows all the drones we might choose. In this case, I'm choosing the Mavic Air 2. On the left hand side, by dragging the altitude scale, we can see how the pixel resolution as well as the flight time and number of batteries will change. In this case, the required output was a 2.5 centimeter image resolution. Let's take a look at the settings now. Here we can adjust the speed of flight, and in this case, the maximum speed of 36 kilometers an hour was a bit fast for my liking. We can adjust our front and our side overlap as well, and then also the survey direction as we're doing now. We want to do this to optimize the flight time as well as the image orientation per the sun angle if it's necessary for us. We also see that in this case three batteries would be required, but Copterus makes a very good job of knowing when it's about to run out of battery, landing, allowing us to change and continuing with the flight. Once all of this is done, we can save it to the file and we're ready to go. So what kind of results can we expect? Well, that really depends on the software you're going to use for processing. In this case, I made use of Agisoft Metashape. The outputs are pretty darn good. A lovely DTM can be created. From that, we're able to extract contour lines at whatever resolution we like. A beautiful ortho image can be created as well. But how about some drainage lines? In this case, the client wanted to put in some drainage onto their form. And here we see it mapped out using Global Mapper. It's a very nice tool when we overlay all of these as well. It just gives your client something more to look at. But at the end of the day, people like to see things in three dimensions. And as a final deliverable, a cesium based web viewer was handed to the client in this case. Here we pan around it a bit, we can see how the 3D model has been draped onto that DSM really well. You will notice a few holes in certain structures of the DSM, such as the trees, and that could have been overcome by adjusting the camera angle through flight as well. In this case, however, the ground model for drainage was the purpose of the survey, and so it really wasn't necessary to adjust that camera angle.
And there you have it, that's about it. A very quick rundown of the new Copterus app, what it can do for you and your clients, and really just makes waypoint flying for DJI drones which don't have this feature built in, a very simple process. It's only $5, you might as well give it a go.